Welcome back everyone, Triple M here, and uh, today I'm doing a quick overview over my Raspberry Pi, which is running Android TV 10. Now, a couple days ago, I released a video showing you guys how to install Android 10, fully functional Android 10, on your Raspberry Pi 4, and, and in that video, I asked you to, to kind of let me know what you guys wanted me to test out, plus there are some other things that I wanted to test out on my own. So this video, we're going to do a complete walkthrough, we're going to see what works, what doesn't, and also, if you guys have any additional questions, I drop it in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So if you're new to the channel, I do everything tech from your streaming reviews, streaming news, product reviews, unboxings, and everything in between. Hit that subscribe button in the top right, smash the notification bell, make sure you select all on notification. That way you won't miss a video or a giveaway. All right, so before we get into some of those questions, let's just go over the user interface and just see what the differences are between this and your typical Android TV. Just looking at the main menu here from home, you can see that I have basically everything that you would expect from Android TV. I do have my favorites up top, my on next, I do have my recommended, and these of course are customizable, so I can go to the left, I can remove it, I can move it, I can do anything that I would normally be able to do on my Android TV. Just going through the menus, everything seems pretty smooth. Over to my settings, let me go to my remotes and accessories first. I was able to connect my game sir, G4. I played a couple games. I did do a gaming test and I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. What works flawlessly, guys, the, the process was basically going to add your accessory, enter pair mode on your controller, and everything was all set. I did do a full review on the game sir G4. I think it's one of the best Android controllers out there. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description. And also I was able to link my Fire Stick remote to this device, and that worked extremely well. So Everything on the Fire Stick remote worked, except for the voice control. The voice functions uh, don't seem to be working on this device. Doesn't matter which remote I use. So the Amazon remote or, or some of the USB remotes that I plugged in, uh, the voice function doesn't work on this, where they would work on a typical device. So that's something I, I plan to continue testing. Uh, also, uh, I will play with some of the settings just to see if something might be uh, disabled that I need to turn on. If you guys know the answer to that, drop it in the comment section. But that's one of the downsides of this voice function not working. Let's go ahead and move on. So you can see I have my account linked. I am signed into my Google account. I am connected via Ethernet and I'll show you my speed test here in a little bit, both Wi-Fi as well as Ethernet. As far as your device preferences, it's going to have your typical Android TV options for the most part. So if you go to about, you can see it is a Raspberry Pi. Here's the model. Here's the version of Android and it gives you some more information. You do have your sound settings. So here's what you have. Of course, uh, this is going to, uh, really depend on what device you have hooked up as far as your audio options where you can use some of these settings as far as your storage guys i do have a usb connected there's an option to adapt your storage and what that means is that you can go ahead and combine whatever storage you have on a ssd into your internal storage to make it one complete drive so that option is there you also have the option to view media directly on a usb drive or on a ssd and we'll test it out as well as we go along does have a built-in Chromecast. So let me go ahead and just test that, see if that's truly functional. So, all right, so I am recording on my phone. Let me just go ahead and uh, launch a video. And let me just skip the ad here. All right, let me see if I can select the cast option. The name of this device is Raspberry Pi 4. So let me select that. And it looks like that isn't working at the moment, guys. So here it is again, Raspberry Pi 4. And nothing there. So for the most part, it looks like the cast option is not working for now. So something, again, we'll have to double back to. And I know a lot of people are asking about that. You have your screensaver option, location. Raspberry Pi settings is something that's going to be unique, of course, to the Raspberry Pi. So within that, if you go there, you do have your audio option. This does pass audio through HDMI. You have your graphic drivers, your display resolution, and uh, 4K questions are going to come up, guys. The maximum resolution that I found on this is 1920 by 1080p, which is full HD. I did bring it over to a 4K monitor, 4K TV. The resolution did not change. So here are your resolution options. So you have full HD, 50. 30 frames per second as well as 720p so nothing you watch is going to be 4k and you'll see when we head over to youtube to test it out 
All right, so you have a rotation options, IR, you have your keys, um, volume keys, which the volume keys does work. You can see it there. All right, SSH, RTC, sensors, and those are your, your basic Android options. Now, a lot of questions about streaming and which applications work, which applications did not. So I'm gonna go over all that. Of course, we're gonna go ahead and start with YouTube. Now, as I say in my initial video, this does have a full Google Play Store on it. So any application for the most part that you're able to get on your NVIDIA Shield, you should be able to get on this device. Here we are playing a 4K video. And if I go to the options, you can see the max resolution that's available to me is gonna be 1080p. So 4K is not available, and I do have the stats for nerds running. And you can see it's doing a decent job with the actual playback of this video. So you can see some information there. The the, the frames 1920 by 1080p. The amount of frames is uh, 1100 going on 12. Drop frames is nine. So it's doing a pretty decent job. Shows the volume, shows the codec, shows the connection speed, network activity, as well as the buffer health. So in general, YouTube works great. The voice search does not work on it. Uh, 4K is not going to work, but Full HD works flawlessly. Now, as far as some of the other apps that were asked about in this video, let's just go over a couple of them. So Let's start with Prime Videos. Prime Videos was available in the Google Play Store. However, when I went to play anything, it basically gave me an error that, please try again for more help, blah, blah, blah. So from the looks of it, Prime is not available or compatible with this device. Now, Netflix is gonna be a similar story. Now, Netflix, unlike Prime, is not found in the Play Store at all. I did try to sideload it. I am getting this error, so that's definitely something I'm gonna have to look into, but Netflix doesn't work either it might work in the web browser but that's something i'll have to test a little bit later so two of the big guys are not working on this device and definitely something to keep in mind so i had someone ask about imdb tv so all right so imdb is going to be another one that doesn't work properly as far as some of the other apps that were asked about the live channels app this of course is known for being on nvidia shield uh this works flawlessly uh this basically combines your, your free sources, guys. Put it together in one user interface. Pluto TV works well also, and you can see there, Pluto's probably one of the most popular free uh, TV services that's available on your device. That works flawlessly as well. And so you can see there, I can flip through the channels. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Uh, Zumo is another one, works flawlessly with no issue. I really like Zumo. I, I did a review on it not too long ago. A couple days ago i believe uh, zumo is pretty good works well plex is another one that did work as well let's go ahead and we'll just launch that played for a couple seconds all right so big fat ad right there but just trust me that plex is working now downloader also works this of course allows you to install your third-party applications and do some other things just to make your experience a little bit better now, another thing I wanted to test out is I do have a USB drive on here. I just wanted to show you guys uh, what's on there. I just want to show you that I can install applications from there. So if I go over right there to notification, it is going to tell you that there's a USB drive in there. Click on that. And you can see I have uh, Netflix on here, which is the one I side loaded. Obviously, it did not work, but I was able to install it there. I do have some content on here, but what I wanted to test out, this is a 4K video, drone video that I, I recorded a couple years ago. And let's just see if that will play on this device. So playing 4K in general, whether it's on YouTube, on Plex, on your, your internal storage, is not gonna work properly. We'll go back and we'll try a 1080p video. So this is a 1080p video uh, a review that I did couple months ago and you can see that works fine guys You're able to skip ahead everything looks flawless so like i said 1080p is fine and one thing to, to consider is that the raspberry pi in general cannot handle 4k and as far as the speed test of my network i am going to be demonstrating that using the analytics application now the first test is going to be wired in so i am connected via ethernet i should let you guys know i am paying for 400 megabits per second download and about 20 upload making it out pretty decent 294 download about 23 about 23 upload the wireless performance is a different story this is not up to par and i think the reason for that is the type of case that i actually put on my raspberry pi now if you guys seen that video i am using argon case and this case is amazing uh looks pretty good very functional downside of this case is that it's fully metal so it might be blocking that signal that i uh, the pi needs to communicate to my router so 
Not a big deal for me. I am going to be wired for the most part. But if you guys are planning on doing this and using wireless, you might want to consider using a different case. Now, as far as the actual benchmark results, I uh, didn't do extremely well. You can see my overall score is 113. Graphics score is 89. Physics score, which is uh, basically the CPU, was a 1570. If I skip ahead, you can see that overall this performed better than 9% of devices that ran this test. Now, uh, this is compared to, I believe, 16 or 19 on the Fire TV sticks. But just keep in mind that the score on this is uh, really low as far as your benchmark. Now, having said that, gaming wasn't a bad experience. I was able to uh, connect my game share control. I was able to download Asphalt. Didn't really experience a lot of issues gaming. I was able to control everything fine. The controller worked perfectly. The graphics wasn't robust or anything. And that's what we should expect from this device. But uh, performed well overall. I do think there were drop frames, but I didn't really affect my gaming performance overall. Having said that, guys, I couldn't recommend this as of yet as a primary device. There are some bugs that need to be worked out, but uh, if you're into tinkering like I am, definitely worth checking out in my opinion. That's it for this video. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.